Welcome to Berated, Berated Conversations. Join us as we talk to the creative people behind the independent movies and get the behind the scenes stories. Uh, this week we talked to Drew Marvick, uh, director of Pool Party Massacre. Um, he was in uh, Layer of the Killer Clowns. Uh, Escape from Las Vegas. Las Vegas, yeah. Um, uh, Tapehead. Yeah, I think his IMBD has uh, 50 movies that he's in, uh, 14 ones that are coming out, uh, producer credits, writer credits, director credits, like just a whole list of everything he's done. Yeah, I, this was a pretty awesome conversation. Um, I, I I really think people will enjoy this one. This one was uh, like he's a, he's a really cool dude. Yeah, super awesome. But yeah, um, we hope you enjoy this. So go ahead and give it a listen. Word. I, I would mention uh, you, you were you, recently you were in Layer of the Killer Clowns, Tapehead, uh, From Dust Till Bong. Uh, I think we watched Escape Pool Party Vegas. Massacre. Yeah, Escape from Las Vegas. Yeah. So to name a few. Yeah, I'm, there's a bunch. There, I forget. Yeah, no, we're looking at. So, I don't know if you, like, I don't want to put this on the spot. I don't know if you remember meeting us or even seeing us, <laughs> but uh, a while ago, we went to, um, was it Nightmare Toys to yeah. see Dave and uh, Felissa, and we were there, and, like, I kept looking at you, and I was like, God damn it, I know this guy. Like, you know, I swear I've seen this guy. And so we just kept looking, and then like Anthony and I just kept looking at each other, and we're just like, I don't know, but I didn't want to be that guy who's like, hey, man, like you look really, really familiar, but I don't know where from, you know, and be like, can I have your name or something, man? So yeah, we sat, we talked for a little bit, but no, like I could not. And then I think that that night we ended up recording an episode when we watched, I don't even remember what episode we watched or what movie we watched. I was like, God damn it. I was like, that's that dude that was there today. I was like, he was at the table and everything. We're just like, that was him. So we didn't even, you know, get an autograph. We didn't get to do anything, a picture, nothing with you, man. And so it was, yeah, we saw, like I said, I can't remember what one it was, what movie we saw, but you were there. And I was like, it's him, you know. So then I I pop up in a lot of things. So who who knows but that's funny um i actually get that a lot like i have a lot of people come up to me in public and ask me why they would know who i was or where i'm from or and i don't know it's like 50 50 if they actually know who i am or if they think i'm somebody someone else no yeah, like, i'm pretty sure i've met like lucy lou before and i was like i know who you are i was like you're lucy lou. she's like no i'm not and i'm like Okay, I'm pretty sure I've seen like a bunch of your movies. It's like that's not me, and I'm like, and that's the problem. <laughs> like, I've I had a lady in a Target. Uh, I don't know if either of you watch wrestling. Uh, come mm-hmm. up to me and think I was Daniel Bryan, the wrestler. Oh, okay, and <laughs> I kind of see that a little bit. <laughs> I didn't even know who he was at the time, and this was like four years ago, five years ago, pre-COVID. And I was like, I don't know who that is, but I know it's not me. She's like, yeah, it is you. I watch you wrestle all the time. And I was like, oh, wrestler. No, I'm. that's not. And she <laughs> picked, pulled a picture on her phone and was like, this is you. I'm like, no, that. look at that guy. He has no <laughs> tattoos. And he's in oh, underwear. Man. I'm fully dressed and I'm covered in <laughs> tattoos. And she still like followed me around the store. She brought me an action figure from the toy aisle. Buy this for me. Will you know, she want me to sign it. What? And I was like, I'm not. I swear to God, I'm not him. Like, I'm like, here, this is me. Here's my IMDb. Like, no. She finally believed me at some point. The tattoo thing, I think, she started to believe <laughs> me at that point. Like, are but, you sure? No. Yeah, <laughs> man. It was. It kept bugging us, bugging us. And then I, like, I swear, I think it was that night we watched a movie, and I was like, damn it, that was him, man. You know, was it King Twilight? Funny. It might Twilight. I'm not in Twilight. No. Oh no, I'm not Twilight. Camp <laughs> Twilight. Twilight. <laughs> well, I'm like I'm not in Twilight, am I? <laughs> no, right. He's like you could have been. Yeah, no. Like I'm not the best with uh. People. One time I was out, so I'm a. I used to be a sign language interpreter for like deaf, hard of hearing patients. You know. Oh, okay. And so I saw this lady, and we were out in public. I think we we're at a gym, 
and I see her. And so I go in like the middle of class. Someone's like, what's up? And I start, you know, looking at her. She looks at me, starts our sign to her. She's like, who the fuck are you? And I was like, oh, all right. You're not in my class. Bye. And <laughs> so I just went into some random class and started signing to these people. There's like, what? And I was like, all right, That's never mind. Funny. I'll be I ever <laughs> back to that place ever again. That's funny. It was messed up. But yeah. Well, hopefully we'll meet again somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it was just, uh, you know, as soon as we figured out what it was and we go and we search the IMBD and it's just, I think my, uh, my computer crashed of how many movies you've been in, man. Like well, I was talking to Anthony before this, it says what 50 movies and so many producer roles and directors, writers, everything, man. So your, your list is just amazing. Uh, man. You know, I lose, I lose track. Yeah, but, and I don't even want like it's funny. We before we started recording, you were started mentioning some of them, and I was thinking to myself, "Oh my god, I haven't even, I haven't seen that, I haven't seen that, I haven't seen that." Um, I don't even watch. I have a stack of Blu-rays of movies that I'm in on my desk and that I haven't even seen yet. But I wonder that's if crazy. that's you know, I've heard of sub, you know, like uh, sometimes there's uh, musicians. That there's like, no, I only listen to myself, you know? And then there's other ones that's like, no, I don't play my own music because you're like, I don't listen to like our podcast that much because I was like, Brian, I think you have a nerd ass voice, you know? And so then I was like, I don't want to listen to my voice. Like I hear it all the time. So it would be, su- it'd be super weird to only listen to yourself or like if I only watched movies I was in, like that would not only be super weird, but I would never have a long term relationship <laughs> because no one would put up. No one would put up with that. Um, but yeah, my girlfriend would bail in a heartbeat like she sits through some of the movies I'm in. But if it was exclusive, I think she would have left me a long time ago. But no, I mean, there's part part of that. Like I remember seeing interviews with you know big A list actors when I was a kid, and they would say things like "I don't I don't watch my own movies," and I remember, and I always thought it was bullshit. And I was like, "Yeah, you do. Shut up, you narcissist. You watch all of them." But uh, but now, and not that I'm a big star or anything, but but I've been in movies now, and I don't really want to. It makes me want to watch a movie less if I'm in it. Like I don't actually. Mm. I don't get joy out of seeing myself. I'm just going to be critical and it's going to take me out of it. Um, so it actually makes me want to see a project less, which is why there's a stack on my desk. If I have time to watch a movie, I'm probably not going to grab one of those because I have so many other movies that I really actually want to watch that I'm not in. So um, I'd rather do that. But if I'm at a premiere or you know, oh, yeah. time arises, then of course I'll watch. I don't like, close my eyes at a premiere, but I just tend to not want to watch them. I don't. I don't need to look at myself. Yeah, that's very yeah. what humbling. That's awesome, dude. That's what's you know. We never even thought about that one. We were like, you know what? If you were watching it, and then you're like, oh, I didn't mean to do that one. But then you know, and then it just takes you away from it. So yeah, never thought about that point of view. Yeah, I've never watched a movie and been like, damn, I was good in this. Like, <laughs> I'm like I'll pat myself on the back. Like it's never happened. I was watching. So. Go grab your neighbors. Come here, Carl. Come yeah, here, watch exactly. Me. This dude's babe. Ass. Babe, get in here. I'm amazing. No, I'm always like, ah, shit. I could have done that so much better. Or what was I? Where was my eyeline? Or what was I even thinking? Why did I go that direction? Wow. Why did I do this movie? I mean, um, all these questions that go through my mind. So yeah, I, I tend to, I haven't watched several of them. And it's not even because of the movie. It's nothing to do with the movie. Like some of them, I'm sure the movies are great. People tell me that the movies are great and that I was great in them. And I'm still, I just would rather hold on to that. No. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but the one we, we did our full episode on was <laughs> Pool Party Massacre. And you directed that as well I as... Did. Where the body magical. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you were the uh, the brother as well. I was. And I have Which, seen that movie. Yeah. I love the family photo. It's right. like the most <laughs> ridiculous family photo. <laughs> oh, I love that. And it's actually a photo. Fo- like, it was a photo that was hanging in my parents' hallway of my parents, myself, and my ex wife, and my two kids. And so I took the photo and scanned it and photoshopped over like the just, I guess I only photoshopped over my ex-wife's face. 
and my parents' faces. And mine and my kids stayed the same. So it was just such a ridiculous, cheesy photo that my parents <laughs> had hanging in their house. So I had to include it in some way. No, old cheese photos, man. I think that was. Yeah, Anthony. I don't know where that. I don't even know where that is. I I still have the framed photo of 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 my mom from the movie, um, with blood splatter all over it. That's oh, in my office. That's that's in my office. But the family photo one I don't have. Oh. Oh. Um. I think Anthony was going to ask. Um. Was that your house? For a pool party massacre. Ah, uh, yes, that's a very uh, common question. I said you were going to ask uh, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, the the majority of the house, I mean, the movie takes place at one house, um, but it was shot in two different houses and just cheated to look like one. But the majority of it, and the exterior and the pool, was my parents' house. Um. The, so that's what you see most of. But then some of the bedrooms and bathrooms. Like, for instance, the end scene, the final act where all the blood gets everywhere and I have, like take an axe to the bed and all that. So that was my actual bedroom at my house. The shower kill was actually my then like four year old daughter's bathroom at our house. So but most of it was shot at my parents' house. Oh, wow. So because I was going to ask because there's that scene where the, the guy's in the bathroom and they drill or, he, you know, the killer drills through the wall yeah. and it was like. I was like, wow, that's some commitment. (laughs) Well, um, I mean, I was very committed to making that movie. It was my first feature and I was going to, you know, I had a die trying mentality. So I would have definitely drilled a hole through my parents' wall while they were not home and (laughs) patched it up. Like, I I won't lie. That would, I definitely would have done that. But luckily I've been in the business long enough and worked with some really good art department people and learned enough tricks that, Um, I just built a fake wall over a doorway. And so the actual drilling through the wall is a fake wall that I just, that I built and put a plug on and drill and drilled through that and painted to match and everything. So, um, yeah, so I didn't have to drill through that. It's funny. My parents, when they first saw the movie for the first time, when that scene came up, they both (laughs) turned and looked at me and I was like, fake wall, fake wall. (laughs) Okay. Because they were out of town when we shot that scene. They were home for a lot of it. I mean, if like my parents are just out of frame in a lot of the the scene, not a lot of them. I mean, they I would ask them to leave because my mom would ask too many questions. But they were there often, and for some of the kills, they were just out frame. And my kids, my kids were there a lot too. No, that's yeah, that's funny. Like uh, I remember one of my buddies broke a hole in his mom's wall and we patched it and everything looked good. And there was a picture frame over it and everything like that. Everything was perfect and everything like that, except we didn't realize that the paint wasn't a hundred percent matched up. And so one day she was cleaning and she saw that there was like a hole about, you know, like this big. And she's like, what happened here? And we're like, what do you mean? She's like, I know you guys broke a hole in this somehow. She's like, because the paint doesn't match where it's like, all right, this is what happened. And then we had to tell a story of what happened. <laughs> so even in, you know, we were, man, out of high school, we got in trouble for that. So we were even adults. And then she's wow. like, how'd this break a hole in the wall? It was like, it was all fixed. And I think we just need to put a different layer of paint on it. So, well, for, for years, my mom would still, like, you know, every six months, I would be over there for dinner and she would point <laughs> something out and be like, just, just want to let you know, I found another blood splatter. <laughs> And then, you know, somewhere in the house, and I'm like, ah, I'm sorry. You just um, mess with her, be like, you know what, mom? Like, we had it a hundred percent clean. So all this new yeah. blood splatter coming from somewhere yeah. else. It didn't come from the movie. Questionable. <laughs> but, like, but they have since sold the house. So now, if anybody finds blood splatters, that it'll. I don't, who Damn. knows what think. We always wanted to do that. Like, if you you know rip your carpet out and put like floor down, they'd be like, help me, and then write it in like you know red marker or something, and then if yeah. anybody else comes up that's awesome did they mention that that that's the house to help sell it <laughs> no i don't think that would help oh. sell it um but i did i was helping my parents move out and met the new owners and they mentioned it like my parents mentioned it to them and they they got a kick out of it but but they I'm, yeah and then i asked if i could still shoot there when i make a sequel 
And they said, sure, which I don't think they would really let me. But then they're like, but we're also gutting the entire house. Like they like demoed the entire house. So it wouldn't even work. And it looks nothing like it did. Man. Yeah, so it's gone. The, the pool party mask grounds is gone. I mean, it looks from the outside looks all the same. But now we thought it was awesome that uh, in what tape head, there's that big, huge poster in the boys room where it's like, hey. There's a freaking pool party massacre post in the boys' room. You know, where it's like, I wonder if that was there on purpose or, you know, if it's like a like a little Easter egg thing or if it's just like, no, that was just a real poster that I had hanging. No, I mean, it was, I, it's an Easter egg that Dustin wanted to put in there for sure. Yeah. Um, but, I, I mean, I think Dustin had a pool party massacre poster already. I mean, he's got like, oh, I'm sure you talked about it, like a whole video store in his basement. So. He's got a lot of cool stuff. I know. He just mentioned how awesome it was with the, uh, because we were talking to him. Uh, we always do like the PSAs too, where it's like, you know what? This person deserves to be brutally murdered by Tapehead because he's an asshole. And then all of a sudden, we're just like, yeah, that homeless guy out of nowhere that's just like, hey, get over here, you ugly dude, was all pissed off at him for no reason at all. He's like, yeah, that was Drew. And we're just like, what the hell? Like, we thought it was <laughs> for a sec, you know? But then we're just like, why would he do that? You know, why is the homeless guy so mad at this guy who clearly isn't, uh, I don't know, isn't human, you know, just very special. (laughs) Yes. I don't know. I don't know why my character was so angry, (laughs) but But he he regretted it. (laughs) No, he was just nothing but good words from him, man. He was like, you know, you called him up, was like, hey, I can help you out. You know, we'll do this. And then, Yeah. It was a great. It was a great experience. I mean, I watched the short, his first tape head. I don't know. Like we, I guess we were friends on Facebook, um, and he posted about it, and he said he had a couple copies, so I bought one. I like to, you know, support other indie filmmakers as much as I can, and I happened to stumble on it, buy it, enjoyed it, and even more so, just enjoyed his passion. Uh, so yeah, so I told him I'd help him, and the next thing I know, I think he didn't believe that I would actually come. Really. To his- small town in Iowa and work on his movie, but it's, I wouldn't even say little movie. Like he, they made this big movie in this little way. Um, so it was super, super impressive. I'm glad I got to be a part of it. Oh, oh yeah. Um, Although Connor, I haven't seen it yet. Don't spoil it. Yeah. That's the thing. Like we watched it and like, and we loved it just because I feel like movies today, it's like they kind of play it safe. It's like the things you can't say, the things you can't do. And it's like in that um, movie, it, uh, it just feels like a real portrayal of what a small town would feel like. Mm-hmm. Like those yeah. people would oh. exist. I bet it. I bet it is because it really is a small. I mean, I'm from like I'm from Orange County, California, which is very populated and very suburban. Um, and mm-hmm. now I live in Las Vegas, which is still a very populated touristy city. So to go to where they shot in this little town, I don't remember, Shenandoah, Iowa, I think is what it was called. Um, and it was like, yeah, I'm like, do, do you guys have a Starbucks? And I think they had one. <laughs> and I was like, one? Like, we have intersections where there's four. Like, literally, there are four Starbucks on one in a, one intersection. Um, oh, I got you. things like that. And I was like, where, what's like, where could we eat? I remember one night I'm like, what's open. And they're like, it's 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I'm not in Las Vegas where there's 150 steakhouses open at right. 10 o'clock at night. Um, but it was so cool also because then unlike somewhere like here, a first time filmmaker wouldn't be able to pull any strings with the city. I mean, you'd have to just fill the same way that I have to, you'd have to fill out a permit application and go through that whole process. And you'd have to have production insurance and you'd have all all these requirements that are kind of out of reach for an indie filmmaker making a low to no budget film. But in a town like that, I mean, they like the mayor and the sheriff, like they closed streets for them and let them do all these things because they thought it was so cool that, that they were making this movie. Um, so then to be a part of that and see that and just it's a family affair, like with him directing and his wife shooting and his son in it and, um, you know, using their house and, and their neighborhood and all their friends and family. It was cool. Like everywhere we went, 
And then I stood out like a sore thumb in this tiny little town, like this weird <laughs> long haired Viking guy with covered in tattoos. Like everyone <laughs> knew that I wasn't from there and was like why I was there instantly. They're like, ah, you must be here for the horror movie. And I was like, yeah, yeah I am. Or we'd walk into, I'd walk into a place with them and be like, ah, this must be the guy you brought in from Hollywood. And I was like, I'm, I'm not from Hollywood, but but I guess so. So it was fun. I, I, I'm i really glad I got to be a part of it. That's awesome. Yeah, the, the one that I really wanted to get to because um, like we, we watched Layer the Killer Clowns and you're in maybe 10 minutes of the movie. No, the last... Like, I mean, I guess it's like the end. I, again, like, I haven't seen Layer of the Killer yeah. Clown either. But um, it felt like being on set, like a very trippy, psychedelic uh, Yeah, we, we were talking about that. You know, there's like the scary movies, and then there's like creepy movies. You know, like I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Gummo. Gummo is pretty creepy. But, you know, then there's you know, like... We were talking, I think, what, literally last night about it, about oh, Lair, and it's just, it's such a creepy feeling watching the movie, but it's not one of those movies where it's, uh, what do you call it, the slasher, like, methodically chasing people and killing everybody like that, but it's just yeah. the, the creepiness behind the whole movie, it's like, good God, man. Yeah, and that was get the Gary, the director... Uh, who's a good friend of mine. That was his goal. Like he wasn't obviously wasn't trying to make a slasher movie. Um, he was doing something yeah. different. I mean, he he's a really talented photographer and cinematographer. So um, I think he was just kind of experimenting and having fun. And yeah, and I got to be a part. You know, I play this weird, crazy clown character that's stuck in like a purgatory and literally stuck in a table. Um, I was in, I was in that table. Like I had to climb in and like be a part of that table for hours and hours and hours. Wow! So it was a, it was an interesting experience. Which I, I the, the weirdest part for me with all that is um, the, the 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 marionette clown or the or the what is it the I can't think of the name of I'm thinking of like the 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 music box clown that's next to you is like feeding you applesauce off yeah. of a riding crop. <laughs> what was it? You got you to end this debate, man. Anthony oh, said it was a riding crop, and I said it was a fly swatter. So I think it was a fly swatter. Okay. I think it was intended to be a fly swatter. <laughs> but I, or, what, or it was an actual fly swatter, like an antique. Okay. Uh, like a, <laughs> Yeah, as soon as Anthony and I started talking, I was like, you know what? Come to think about, it, I was like, it did kind of look like a little thicker and smaller, like it was a right one. So yeah. I was like, oh shit. So, all right. But yeah, I believe it was a. Like I'm trying to remember back. I believe it was like some kind of a vintage, like leather fly swatter, because they were also flies. Like I, I had a pantomime catching a fly and eating it. I remember. Oh yeah. Which is always fun to like, you know, try to not look like a complete fool while <laughs> pretend, pretending there's a fly. I mean, that was a, actually a, a difficult role. Um, I have no idea <laughs> if I pulled it off at all. Um, but I mean, it was like a lot of em emotion and character changes and and like a monologue or two that I had to memorize and deliver while stuck inside that freaking table. Um, <laughs> But it was cool. Like I loved this. The set piece was really neat, and everyone I was working with was great. Um, so it was it was fun. I mean, and I wasn't like stuck. Obviously, if I needed to get out of the table, they would have let me out. Like it was a very uh, professional set. We were in a studio on a soundstage. But um, really, oh, wow. damn, yeah, yeah. It was very convincing. It almost felt like the entire movie kind of took place just in the middle of like buildings in the desert. It was That's it was very cool, well shot. Which I think is definitely was the intention. But yeah, the scenes I were we were in, we were in an actual soundstage here in Vegas. Like Gary built that set, but like right on the other side of the fake wall with the window that was next to me was a spaceship set, and the other side of that was a restaurant. <laughs> and the other side of that was a hospital. <laughs> so I mean, like we were, you know, That's awesome. certainly <laughs> certainly weren't in the middle of nowhere and two minutes from the strip. Oh. Wow. Yeah, you should see. You could have gone. You know, when you're driving up towards uh, 
the M over to the right hand side. There's those painted. No, it's on the left hand side now. When you're driving out towards Prim now, those big old oh, painted rocks on the left hand side. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. We're thinking seven seven magic mountains, I believe they're called. Oh yeah, that's so right, that yeah. was shot out here in Vegas, or the layer of the killer clown. Yeah, yeah. Damn. I mean, I don't know that the entire movie was, but they live uh, Gary, and then the lead in the movie, Tabitha Stevens, is Gary's wife. Like they're they're good friends of mine. They live here in Vegas, um, but I think some of it was shot. I mean, there were a lot of desert stuff. I remember when they're going out to the desert. So it might have been the U. It might have been some of it. Might have been U. Cool. Uh, no, I wonder too. Like, ah, uh, yeah, because we're out here. Like Anthony and I. Like we're the very southwest tip of Vegas. Like that's where we're at. Like you know, like we'll tell you like when we stop recording around there. But yeah, we'll tell yeah. you like after we stop recording. So everybody's like, oh, hold on, write this down. Let's go find the real addresses. You know? <laughs> so they, people can find them. Anyways, yeah, that's one thing I've learned. People can people can find my address. That's for sure. Oh well, here we go. It's, weird, it's a thing. weird world we live in, where you can Google people's names, and if you pay the extra nine ninety nine, you can find out every address they've ever lived at and every place they've ever worked and whatever. It's crazy. Wow. Unless you have like a super common name. So I have a, a super common name. And so when we were buying another house. So it's like, is this you? And I was like, no, that ain't me. Some dude that got married. And then like within a month of being married, got some other lady pregnant. And so then both of <laughs> he now has two kids with his, now it's his ex-wife and a baby's mom. But then like he skipped out and didn't pay child support for either one of them. And so both of the baby's moms are coming after him. And so the lady, when we were doing our, uh, whatever, our uh, our our home loans or whatever applications, she sent me all this information. And it's like, okay, so here's the kids' names. Here's your wife's names. I was like, hey, I only have one wife. I only have one kid. <laughs> I'm like, they're right here. And they're like, you should use this different name then. And I was like, all right then. So, <laughs> yeah, it's That's pretty, funny. It's yeah, it's messed up. But... No, so like I wanted to ask like um like what got you into it? Like what got you into acting? Like was there um, like I mean I've always been like the class clown and I've always been acting in a sense of like trying to entertain people. I was an only child, so uh, I had to keep myself entertained. Um and it just like comedy has always been my <laughs> crutch and my defense mechanism like my whole life. But actually, and I did, you know, plays here and there, like most kids did. Uh, but actually acting, I just kind of fell into. I've been in the film industry for, Jesus, what year is it? I've been in like, I don't know, 20 something years now. So um, as a producer, producing commercials mostly. Um, so it'd be on set constantly. That was my job. And we would be casting actors and we would be producing these commercials. And often while you're on set, uh, you would realize that you need another person, either whether it be a background per- actor or another like featured person to deliver one line. And so I would always be the first person to volunteer. No wow. one wanted to do it. And I'd always like, well, I'll do it. We, oh, we need somebody to play the pizza guy. We forgot about that. All right, I'll do it. Um, so like over the years, I just ended up in like all of a sudden, I realized I'd been in like 50 commercials. Um and didn't even, wasn't paying attention. And people started recognizing me like here locally in Vegas. Like I'd go, I used to live up uh, by Anthem and seven Hills and I'd go to my local Vons and people would be like, Hey, you're the guy from the Ford country commercials, or you're the guy from the Nevada contractors board commercials. And you're, wow. you're the guy from this. So and now I'm going to have to watch some commercials. Yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't done one in a long time, but, um, but it was just funny. I was like, I was like, man, I guess, I've done a lot. And then I sat down and thought about it. And then it got to the point where some of the directors that we represented and worked with often would then think of me for role, like in the pitch process or in the creative process would write roles for me because they loved what I did in these previous commercials. So then all of a sudden I was getting more and more commercial roles and I had never had a commercial agent or even try, like I would be also producing the commercial and sometimes starring in it. So it just kind of, happened and then through that people then people start 
you know, asking me if I'd be in their short films uh, or then their feature films. And it just kind of went from there. And then with me being in the horror side in my personal life and then making Pool Party Massacre, then it just exploded from there. Wow. That's that's awesome, dude. That's, yeah. We're for sure going to have to start watching and paying attention now. Yeah, I don't know if any commercials still air. I mean, maybe they do. I mean, because sometimes they'll renew them and they'll be random. Like there was a Ford Country one that they renewed for years where I have like bare arms and I'm trying to get into the wind. I don't know. It's an old campaign that I used to do. <laughs> for it. But um, but yeah, there's still people that know me as that. Like they'll be like, hey, it's bare arms. And like, what? Hey, how's it going? No. Oh. Oh, but yeah, that's... that's how I got into acting. And then it slowly, it, oddly enough, it's now shifted. Like in the beginning, I was producing and directing and acting for fun or occasionally. And now it's flipped. And like I haven't, pretty, like I'll work on a commercial every now and then or direct something every now and then. But it, it seems like acting has completely taken over. Wow. Nice. That's what I was like too. Like, you know, I've heard that when you retire, you get kind of bored. And they're like, you know what? I'm kind of bored. I'm just going to go get like a part time job. And they're just like, hey, you work really good. We're going to bump your hours up. And then they're just like, hey, you know what? Your hours are really good. We're going to give you an assistant manager position. You're like, no, damn it. I'm retired. I'm only <laughs> coming out here to do this because I'm bored, you know? But now that's, that's funny, man. That's an awesome story. Yeah. That is fun. But I'm definitely not retired. No, I was just. <laughs> I wish I could retire. <laughs> no, just how you start out. You're like, okay, look. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess I'll do the pizza guy once. And it's like, yeah. damn it, Drew, we really need a pizza guy. He's like, all yeah. right. I get out and you drag me back in. See? Yep, yeah, always. All right. Um, well, yeah, I was going to um, ask, like, you, know, you kind of leave the original pool party massacre on a, a bit of a cliffhanger. Kind of like a, like is was there is there a plan for a second movie? A hundred percent. There will be a second movie for sure. Um, I actually wanted to make it like pre COVID. We were about we were you know in pre production and getting ready to make it, um, and then the brakes got hit really hard, and it's just been difficult to get it rolling again. Um, but it definitely. Without a doubt. I mean, when I made the first one, I had no intention of making a second one. I just felt like I needed to leave it the ending open because that's what all of the 80s slashers that I grew up watching did. And I felt like it needed it needed that, but I had no no intention of it. And then after a couple of years, then I actually thought it would be fun and then started writing a script. And, and then now I owe it. I owe it to the people. So Right. So it so it has to happen now six five six years later or whatever. Yeah. No, I think Anthony's the one too that I think uh, we try to figure out the stuff. And he's like, "It's going to be the brother. It's going to be the brother." I was like, "There's no way it's going to be the brother." <laughs> but then you start thinking, you're just like, you know what? They do deserve it because they didn't even invite the brother to that pool party. Like, forget that, man. that's the thing you're you know i'm thankfully oh never mind i don't want to get beat up by like my little siblings but (laughs) i just couldn't imagine um what do you call it having a sibling that had like the what do you call it super hot friends and then you always got to be like the younger brother who's like hey let me come over here and hang out, you know, and then get the hell away. And then that's why you became a, that's why you started murdering everybody, stabbing them through yeah. walls and everything. You see another PSA that we just did. Everybody <laughs> Shoot the star across the scene, across the screen. And but, I definitely when when writing that, um, I wanted to write, write characters that you wanted to see get killed. Um, like there's no endearing, like Nancy, I guess a little bit, like she's supposed to be the final girl. Um, and so she is at least a good person. Um, so I guess if you're going to endear yourself to anyone, it'd be her, but everyone else, like I, I just thought it'd be fun to write them all miserable and <laughs> so that you would cel- celebrate 
them getting killed and not be too invested in them and actually then potentially invest in uh, the killer instead. And then if I did make a sequel, I could have more fun with it. Oh, yeah. I mean, because that was the thing I kind of liked about it is this is one of those movies that captures that negative character development really well, where it's Mm -hmm. less about making the characters likable and more about giving you sufficient reasons why you should be happy they're dead. Yeah. That was yeah. That was definitely what was my logic going into it, at least. And it's been something that I've gotten criticism for, too, but, um, from people that don't like the movie. But for me, it's just supposed to be a fun, like, popcorn, no-budget slasher film for people that appreciate those types of things. For people like me. Like, I made the movie for me and hoped that there might be some other people with, you know, a similar taste. And then it turns out that there's a lot of people with similar tastes. I'm not that unique. Yeah, this one definitely did kind of capture because I, I think looking at our numbers, like this is one of our better episodes was Pool Party Massacre as far as listens. Uh, so like people kind of came for the title on that one. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm still blown away when I get invited to conventions and screenings and stuff. How many people have even seen it or that are fans? I mean, like now that it's been out a long time, I mean, enough people have seen it and you know, like seeing, like I bump into people occasionally wearing a shirt, like at a random place in a random city in the country. I'll be at a concert and all of a sudden look over and there's somebody in a pool party massacre shirt. I don't know who they are. They didn't even know I was going to be there. <laughs> Things like that just blow my mind. I mean, there's several people that have pool party massacre tattoos now, which God is crazy. Damn. Yeah. Two people that have a tattoo of my face from the movie, which is Good. even crazier. <laughs> uh, that's insane. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a, a an old uh, employee that really liked a band and he somehow met every single one of the people from the band and got their signatures and then he tattooed their signatures on him and then somehow yeah. he met the band again. He's like, Yeah, look at this. And they're just like, All right, and they're like, Security, could you come get this dude? Like <laughs> 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 something's up with them. You know, that that's nuts, man. There's a lot of that. I mean, in the horror, like on the convention circuit, like I see that a ton with the, the bigger names, uh, the bigger guests, people getting their autographs and then getting them tattooed or even their faces. Um, like the, the couple people that have mine, I'm assuming it was like a, you know, a joke or they were drunk or something. Um, but the no. amount of people that have like photo realistic tattoos of, Bruce Campbell's face, yeah, um, is mind boggling. Like I, which is rad. I, which is rad. I mean, if you you get tattoos of the things that you like, so I I understand it. I understand why people do that. I would never do that. I don't want to look at Bruce Campbell every day of my life. Like I have zero (laughs) interest in that, and I certainly don't want to be intimate with someone that has a tattoo of Bruce Campbell on them because that's gonna get weird. Um, but. That's just me. Um, I have a tattoo of a double cheeseburger on my bicep. I'm sure <laughs> there's more people that think that's stupid. No, nah, um, that means when you sock somebody, they're going to get that Whopper done on them. <laughs> <laughs> but there's so Don't many rad tattoos. My Drew. And I'm, I'm not picking on people with Bruce Campbell tattoos because I have so many friends that have them, which is why I picked it. Um, I just see them constantly. But that's always my joke when I meet. I'm like, man, good thing we're not <laughs> dating. Because I don't want to look at, I don't want to stare at Bruce's face. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of that, and a lot of people get with autographs and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna ask because um, we haven't watched it yet, but we plan on watching um, from Dust Till Bong because we got that from from James Balsamo. Like I, I talked to him, and he's like. Like it, it is very like the the schlocky horror comedy, but it's like done in like a really, really, really fun way. Because we watch Karate oh, yeah. Ghost, and that one, like, <laughs> we're like, where has this been <laughs> since we started this? I mean, he James is unlike anyone else I've ever met. Probably unlike anyone else in the world. Um, like he, his signature style. Um, it's, it's so unique. Um, and, and he's just such a character Like he's super talented and 
super smart and like you might watch his movies and because of the schlock um, think that he isn't, but he is, but he is super talented and super, you know, and hilarious. So uh, he just has this machine that, and he's just churning out these movies um, in, you know, a Balsamo style. And it's great. He's built a, a loyal fan base over the years. And I was, happy to be i think my face is in one or two other ones over the years some little like on a milk carton or something like that but this is the first one where i'm actually a character like a character in in the movie and it was great to go you know be on set with him and all of my scenes were with him which was great uh because there is no script um at all really it's all just no not all i mean he has a storyline in his head and if people need a piece, giving people direction and everything, but, but he doesn't have a, a script. There's no di- There is an exact dialogue that he needs from people. Um, and he's, and you're moving at a really fast pace when you make whatever he makes like two, four movies a month. I don't even know. It's insane. Oh yeah. He said, um, um, was it five? He puts out five movies every two months is what he told me. Okay. So yeah. So two and a half movies a month. So, I mean, it's the pace is, is ridiculous. Um, so there's a lot of either just him feeding you lines or improv work. And luckily I love um, improv work or at least ad living. So, and he's super good at it. So we just got to make up our, just everything that all of our dialogue together, when you watch it, um, we were just coming up with on, on the fly while the camera was rolling. And it was hilarious, at least at, at, in the moment. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it. I don't know how it'll be on screen. I haven't seen it. Yeah, we haven't. I've, uh... I've gotten. I've had people tag me in screen grabs and send me screen grabs from it, uh, especially when it first came out, telling me that it was hilarious. Like my character, Topher the Vampire King. <laughs> <laughs> I think the name alone. The name. Yeah. Alone. Well, it was a my my friend Topher, uh, who's also a filmmaker and an editor. Um, at the time was working editing Tom Devlin's movie in Tom Devlin's office, which is connected to Tom Devlin's haunted house at the monster museum in Boulder city. And that's where James was shooting the scenes, most of the movie, but definitely the scenes I was in. And so I just thought it was funny since I knew that Topher was on the other side of this wall that I was hiding in a coffin in like right behind me and could hear us. Cause he had to be quiet while work quietly. Cause we were filming that I just named my character Topher so that he would have to listen to me say his name over and over again. And that was just like an inside joke for me and me alone, really. Um, like, and then I worked in this dialogue, but you'll hear where I'm, I tell James, my character's name is Topher. And then he's like, I don't want to call you. And then he just like, I don't, I'm not going to call you Topher. And I'm like, you're going to call me Topher. And it just becomes this running through the whole movie. This like Tof, to I can't even tell you how many times the word Topher is said. And it made me so happy. And then I found out when we wrapped, I went in and like kicked the door open, like, ta-da, how'd you like hearing your name? And he wasn't there. And I found out he left before we even started. Then he was never there the whole time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So this joke that I thought between him and I was going to be so hilarious, he missed all of it. He decided to go home because he didn't want to have to work in silence. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it, it still ends up still ended up being funny for different reasons but it was it was all for not <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> all right you ready anthony yep. for the hard hitting ones i am ready uh oh i'm not i mean i mean they're not as bad as they sound i know I'm they're worse <laughs> i'm not worse they're the hardest <laughs> I can I can just do this anytime. Remember, right? All right, <laughs> thanks, guys. <It> was nice. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, oh, my computer died. It's that <laughs> joke. I I never heard it before until a couple years ago. There's like, what the? I don't even remember how the shit goes. It's something about like a. What did the sardine hear or something before he was in the can? It's like, and you're like, what? That doesn't make any yeah. what. I don't know. Anyways, completely butchered that <laughs> shit. Whatever. Like I said, it was some weird ass thing that this this uh this guy said to me at work. He's like something about a sardine in a can, and then it's the sound of the phone hanging up on you. 
Yeah. That was basically the whole bit. I was like, I get it. Try again. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, no. This is how good. But anyways, <laughs> but um, let's see. I'll go with. Uh, all right. Is there anything that you're working on that you can tell us about that you won't get in trouble on for? Um, I don't there, I don't think there's anything happening right now that I can't talk about, um, which is okay. a good thing. Uh, and a bad thing because it means I'm not working enough. Um, <clears throat> no, I mean, I'm in this weird lull. Like I've wrapped every project that I'm attached to right now, except for Coffin Tooth. Um, there's a movie called Coffin Tooth uh, that I'm excited about. And we haven't shot the scenes for that yet. We're shooting those in October. Um, but that's really the only thing that's still outstanding. Like we're done, Triple Xmas. All my scenes are done. It's in post. The Art of Killing, my scenes are done. It's in post. Um, yeah, there's a couple of anthologies that people have reached out to me about directing shorts in, uh, but that's like early stages, like just a, like introduction and, and some uh, getting to know you stuff. So yeah, I don't have much going on. I have a bunch of projects waiting to be unleashed upon the world like the few that i met like triple xmas i can't wait for people to see that uh the art of killing i can't wait for people to see that uh um, dolly deadly 2 kill dolly kill uh that just had a premiere that's gonna be a that's a fun one uh, yeah, holy cow this just says yeah you have 14 upcoming things man yeah <clears throat> i need them to come out right i don't, I don't want people to forget about me Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be hard. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that could happen. Yeah, I wish yeah. I, I wish I had more going on uh, right now. I mean, there's things kind of lingering. Paul and Angie, the uh, filmmakers behind Murder Size and Slasher Lap Party, um, I have informed me that I have, a again, a, a large part in whatever their next movie is, but they haven't decided what it's going to be. So I'm not even sure which movie it is. I have both the scripts, but they don't know which one is next. Either which? Only Fangs, the vampire movie, or <laughs> That's a, good uh, a wrestling movie. <laughs> Wrestle Babes in the Demon Massacre, I believe. Well, you know if you do the wrestling movie and you ever see that lady at Target, she's like, I told you, you bastard. You yeah. were that wrestling guy. I knew sure. it the whole time. It'll it'll come full circle. <clears I'll, <clears sign, <throat> I'll sign a figure someone else because there won't be one of me <laughs> <laughs> which i mean uh murder size that was one i saw the pictures for and i was like this looks appropriately ridiculous because uh it kind of reminded me a little bit of um i don't know if you remember that movie from the 80s uh killer workout of course yeah <laughs> yeah and it's definitely in that in that vein, Death Spa and Killer Workout. Oh, yeah, Death Spa, yeah. And Murder Size, I think, are like the three 80s exercise horror movies. Or at least 80s inspired Which, for Murder Size. Killer Workout still boggles my mind that murders are happening in the gym, but the gym stays open. Yeah. And people still show up to the gym where they're getting murdered. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I work with gyms. That's exactly what would happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I do. It just needs to happen that way. <laughs> yeah. Introduce logic. Yeah. <laughs> no such thing. No. Um, and uh, our next question kind of like we, we have our list of uh, movies that we work from to kind of pick our next stuff. And uh, do you have any suggestions for us for our list? Oh, wow. That, well, a suggestion that I'm not in. Well, it could watch, be something only, you're in, something watch, you're not in. It'd be I easier to tell us what that I'm in. It'd be easier to tell yeah. us what movies you're not in. Yeah. Then well, I only remember I only watch movies that I'm in. This is my new thing. <laughs> this podcast I've converted, and I will only watch things that I'm in. Um. Well, well, I mean, because it just came out, and you can actually get a, you can actually watch it right now. I would say Murder Size would be my suggestion. Oh, that's out. Okay. Like it's available for streaming right now, as of just a couple days ago. Um, now I have to now I have to say it. I forgot who, where you can stream it. Give me one second. Play some elevator music. 
Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, it's on Tubi and uh, Amazon Prime. Is it? I think. Uh, I think. I thought you, I thought you had to go somewhere else first. Again, I don't know anything. I'm just a, an actor who does dumb things. <laughs> I know that the Blu-ray, the Blu-rays are coming soon. I do know that. Oh, New Village Video. That's what I was trying to think of. No, it's New not Village TV Video. Yet. Newvillagevideo.com. That's where you need to go. Newvillagevideo.com. And then you can watch Murder Size. And then after you watch Murder Size, you can watch whatever you want. Then you can watch The Barn Part 2. The Barn Part 2. Have you seen yeah. The Barn? Um, we were going to do the first barn for October as part of oh, our... Ho- which is very our, appropriate. Yeah. It's, it's a Halloween <laughs> theme. But if you get around to The Barn Part 2, I'm in that one. Yeah, because I was trying to think of a way to get to the barn part two faster because I've been told that the barn is really good or is good, but like the barn two is really good. Like, yeah, I think I said that weird, but um, no, um, I love them both. I mean, I like the first one better because I'm not in it, but um, <laughs> but they're both great. And the first one was just, you know, it's just the first one, and it it was doing its festival run when Pool Party Massacre was doing its festival run. So I got to see it at a festival early on before it became like an indie horror darling uh, that it did become and everything. So uh, it was just cool to watch watch its rise um, and meet Justin, the director, early on and see him develop and grow too. So uh, I'm a big fan of both of them and him. So and awesome. I'm actually in. They made an anthology called Cryptids. Oh, um, yes. That I think comes out really soon, too. And I have a tiny little, I'm in it for five seconds, I think, or 10 seconds talking to Joe Bob. Oh, so you're in the the wraparound then? Yeah. So, yeah, because we talked to uh, Brett DeJager. um, Oh, okay. Yeah. The Bone Jangles guy. Yeah. I know Brett. Yeah, he's super cool. He's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you want to ask the last one, Brian? Uh, oh, we told him too. But um, oh, yeah. do you want to plug Unless in your handles right now? How can people? Um, you can ask. I mean, you can ask me as much as you want. What do you want to know? <laughs> oh yeah. Now, <laughs> your, how can people uh, shoot your handles out? You know, if you're on Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I think TikTok is going to find us and be like, "Fuck you guys!" All right. Every I'm time you say them. this. I'm on all of those, um, and I'm and it's super easy because unlike you, I don't have a very common name, so it's just at Drew Marvick on tick on TikTok and on Instagram and on Facebook and on Twitter, but I never go on there. But um, but I am on the other three fairly regularly. I don't actually go on TikTok too often. I only started it because my daughter asked me to, but I started posting videos and then. Now I guess now I'm on TikTok. Once <laughs> once I had a couple like go viral, then suddenly I was like, "Ooh, this is neat." <laughs> it's awesome. Six there million people. Six million people watched this oh. video of me in my kitchen. I'm gonna make another one. What? <laughs> now you're that's man. Apparently we're doing something wrong on TikTok. Well, it's probably just because we don't ever do anything on TikTok. Because well, that has <laughs> se- that has something to do with it. You do have to, you know. That would be know, the main issue. Consistency uh, does help, but you also don't know. I mean, listen, like I make uh, in between movies, and which now has been a bigger lull. Like my, I make a living off my social media, so um, oh. it's a big thing for me. Uh, not as much TikTok, but also TikTok. Um, so occasionally I'll have, like, I just made a video just to be funny because it was 115 degrees here last weekend. Good I God. made a video, um, like cooking hot dogs on my car antenna. I saw that. <laughs> was that <laughs> you? Yeah, it was on the, it was on the news. It like went completely viral. Gina Carano, we shared it. Like all these celebrities were sharing it. Yeah. That was me and my wow. son and, and his minivan cooking God. hot dogs on his car antenna on blue diamond coming out of Walmart. Um, what the fuck? You were like, yeah. seriously, two blocks away from my house. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was two blocks away from my house too. Um, but yeah, so like things like that. I mean, you never know. Like I was literally on the news. Like Channel Three interviewed me about 
the video and my life and all the stuff because of that video. And then, you know, it went, I don't know, I think it's got like five or six million views on Instagram. And it's just hot dogs on an antenna and my voice. Um, so you yeah, know. we were going to throw a pan, like, see, like, and that's the part I didn't want to know. I didn't think about doing, like, we have cast iron pans and, you know, there's always the ones where it's like, here's out in Vegas. And I was like, but do I want to put my cast iron pan outside and then potentially let it get dirty for a couple minutes and then try to cook an egg on it, cool. you know? But then you got you got a cast clean. iron pan. That's the charm of a cast iron pan, though. Uh, you get dirty. It's not a big deal. You just wash it off. Look at all. You're supposed to leave everything you cook on and in it. Yeah, um, you see? But then it's going to start tasting like, you know, hella dirty. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> I, if you do it, though, if you do it, um, I know other content creators that have done it, people that I've worked with, and um, make sure you put the pan out there, like, an hour before you want to cook the egg on it because mm-hmm. I watched so many in the last two weeks that have failed. People, yeah. Where they failed, where they just brought a pan, set it down. And then they're like, all right, we're going to try this. They we don't know anything about heating pan out of their pan. kitchen and they put it down on the, and they talk for five seconds and then they crack an egg and the pan is still room temperature or maybe it's gone up. Now it's 80 degrees or 90 degrees, but you need to, if you leave that black cast iron pan out there for an hour, it's going to be, 200 degrees at least rookie so, mistake and, and the people that people that do that the egg starts cooking instantly and it's it's neat but yeah through the through that i've other people <clears throat> suggested mate you know oh, are you going to cook an egg like as if like my business is trying to cook things outside okay, using I, the sun i can afford um, a bar i can't afford a kitchen what else yeah. can i cook outside? so i got all these like Said, oh, you should do a video where you do this. You should, and I appreciate that, but I'm not trying to necessarily do a an entire series of cooking things. <laughs> but some of them were fun. Like I guess, like a lot of people bake cookies on the dashboard, which I didn't yep. know. But yeah. you just buy like the ready made dough, put it in the pan, put it on your dashboard. Yeah, back a few hours later, and your car smells like fresh baked cookies, and you got cookies. And I was like, oh, that's kind of yeah. That's I have neat. a I have a buddy that I work with. He's in uh, Utah. And he's like, can you guys really do this? I was like, I mean, I've seen it, you know. I was like, but I don't think I'd ever do that because then if you, I don't know, potentially it's going to melt your freaking whatever, your, you know, yeah. your dashboard. You might have, so, and then same with like the hot dogs. Like if you look at it, like on the Instagram reels, which has the most views, I mean, there's thousands and thousands of comments and so many people saying like, this idiot's going to die. This, all the toxic fumes and. And for one, like I didn't eat the hot dog. I'm, it's a I'm a content creator. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> um, like, I didn't like literally put hot dogs <laughs> on a dirty car antenna and drive around Vegas and then eat them. It's not an episode of Jackass. I just thought it was funny. Like I, I I write things that I think are funny and then I film them and then I post them. Um, it's just like making a movie or writing writing anything. Like I, I, you're just trying to create content that people either will relate to or laugh at and that's it so yeah i didn't actually eat the hot dogs in fact my son left them on his antenna for like 48 hours because he thought it was hilarious he drove all around town with hot dogs on his antenna. <laughs> there's just a bunch of cats and raccoons following him around <laughs> probably like he just loved it because like every intersection people were taking pictures of him and they just, they just thought it was funny uh, i'm a lunch and break were, and it cooked i mean Hot one, and that's the other thing. Like the amount of comments of people like they're not going to get cooked enough. You're going to get salmonella. And I was like, hot dogs are cooked. Like they're right? cured cooked meat. Like you can eat a cold hot dog right out of a package, and it's not going to make you sick. Um, so they're not cooking. You're just when you grill a hot dog, you just heat it up and make it, you know, pump it up and get it crispy. Oh, yeah. But but they did actually cook in that, in that sense on the antenna like they plumped up for a while and then the next day after a whole day in the sun they were like completely shriveled and charred when you burn them too much yeah so man that that vegas heat it's yeah. crazy so yeah if you're listening and you don't like any of the movies i'm in you can just follow me for my uh, dumb content i also have a cooking page i i have a completely separate like cooking page where i just post me cooking which has nothing to do with horror movies at all damn i might have to follow that one we might it's, yeah. we, uh well it's, yeah uh, 
It's Drew Cooks on Facebook. Drew Cooks. Uh, yeah. And I also have Mr. Drew, M-I-S-T-E-R, on Facebook also, where I do cooking and random videos. But the Drew Cooks one, it's just me cooking. I've got a Chinese beef and broccoli in a crock pot right now. Dude. That's I would like a, to uh, be a a guest on that one, dude. We'll talk I'm after. Not a, we... I'm not a chef or anything. I just think it's fun to cook. I'm a single dad. I got two kids. Like trying to cook more at home, and I have friends. I have friends that make a living doing cooking content on social media. Some of them make like a ridiculously good living, like in Dang. buy a house with cash kind of living. Um, yeah, and so I was like. I'll, I'll make cooking videos. Like I have a lot of downtime, so it's been fun. I, I'm not buying a house with cash or anything, but but it's been fun. That's awesome, man. But no, I think thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh my god, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you, man. And uh, yeah, as soon as we get, we'd love to have you back on again. You know, maybe give us that. Uh, what do you call it? Second chance of mean us again for the first time type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, appreciate your time, man. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, when there's when there's a good reason or whenever you want me back. <laughs> there doesn't even have to be a good reason. But uh yeah, let me know. Thank you for listening to this podcast. This podcast is available on all major podcast networks and YouTube. If you like what you're hearing, please follow, like, and subscribe on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook.